They say the moon is silent. But what if that silence hides the oldest whisper in our cosmic neighborhood? A story written not in craters or shadows, but in dust. Moon dust. It sounds harmless, soft, maybe even poetic. But this fine gray powder, born from billions of years of cosmic violence, may hold secrets that could rewrite what we think we know about the origins of the Earth, the Moon, and perhaps, life itself. When Apollo 11 astronauts first stepped onto the lunar surface in 1969, they weren't just exploring another world. They were diving into a time capsule, one untouched for eons. What they brought back wasn't gold or crystal or alien artifacts. It was dust. 30 kilograms of it. Yet this dust was stranger and more dangerous than anyone expected. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin described it as clingy, almost alive. It stuck to their suits, to their boots, to every piece of equipment. It smelled like spent gunpowder when they brought it inside the lunar module. That smell, burnt metal and electricity, haunted the air for hours. But there was no gunpowder on the moon. So what were they breathing in? Back on Earth, scientists examined the samples under microscopes. They found particles so sharp they could slice through protective gloves. Moon dust isn't like the sand on Earth rounded by wind and water. It's jagged, angular, forged from relentless micrometeorite impacts. Each speck is the result of violent collisions, vaporized rock reformed under blistering heat and radiation. In a sense, the moon's dust is its battle scar, a record of every blow it's taken for billions of years. But then came something even stranger, Hidden within that dust were traces of elements that didn't quite make sense, compounds that shouldn't exist naturally in those concentrations. Some samples contained tiny glass beads, perfectly spherical, formed by intense heat, too intense for natural processes known on the moon. Were they the result of ancient volcanic eruptions? Or something far older, far more mysterious? In the 1970s, a few scientists quietly suggested that the moon might have once had a thin atmosphere, enough to sustain volcanic storms that rained molten glass. Others argued the glass could be remnants of colossal impacts, meteor strikes so fierce they turned rock into vapor. But a smaller group entertained a far bolder theory, that some of these materials weren't lunar at all. They might have come from Earth. Imagine this. Four and a half billion years ago, a young Earth collides with a Mars-sized body called Theia. The impact is apocalyptic. Oceans boil, mountains vaporize, and molten rock is hurled into space. Over time, that debris coalesces into our moon. But some of Earth's earliest minerals, and perhaps even primitive organic compounds, could have made that journey. If true, then hidden in the moon's dust are fragments of Earth's lost history. Our planet's first fossils, preserved in an alien world. Decades later, when scientists re-examined Apollo samples using modern technology, they found something tantalizing. Water. Not in pools or ice, but in tiny molecular traces inside volcanic glass. How could there be water on a world that's supposed to be bone dry? It turned out, the moon wasn't as barren as once thought. Some of its craters, especially those at the poles, hide perpetual shadows where sunlight never reaches. In those frozen black hollows, spacecraft detected significant quantities of ice. And mixed with that ice? More dust. Dust that could contain not just frozen water, but hydrogen and oxygen, the building blocks of fuel and life. Still, the moon's mysteries deepened. When the Apollo astronauts returned, several reported feeling unwell. Their eyes watered, throats itched. Moon dust had invaded the cabin and their lungs. It was toxic, almost reactive when exposed to moisture, like breathing in tiny shards of glass mixed with lightning. Scientists later discovered that lunar dust, charged by solar radiation, behaves almost electrically. It floats, it clings, it creeps into machinery, even defies gravity for brief moments. On the airless moon, dust acts, alive. In 1972, Apollo 17 astronaut Harrison Schmidt, geologist, explorer, and the last man to walk on the moon, suffered what NASA called lunar hay fever. His nose bled from irritation. 
It was the first time humans realized that moon dust wasn't just a nuisance. It was a hazard, capable of damaging lungs and eyes. For future lunar colonists, this dust could be their most dangerous enemy. But toxicity aside, moon dust may hold a far greater secret. When NASA and international scientists examined isotopic ratios in lunar material, they discovered a near-perfect match to Earth's mantle. It's as if the moon were once part of Earth itself. Yet curiously, certain samples showed slight differences, molecular fingerprints that hinted the moon might have formed from not one, but multiple impact events. Could our moon be a patchwork child of cosmic collisions? And then came another revelation, magnetic anomalies. The moon, as we know it, has no global magnetic field. But some regions, like Reiner Gamma and the Mare Imbrium, exhibit strange localized magnetism. Scientists suspect that tiny metallic grains in the dust, perhaps remnants of ancient iron-rich asteroids, became magnetized during cataclysmic impacts billions of years ago. These patches are invisible to the eye, but they distort instruments and even repel charged particles. Imagine walking across a landscape where invisible magnetic waves shimmer beneath your boots. Today, new missions are once again turning their gaze to lunar dust. NASA's Artemis program, set to return humans to the moon, will bring advanced tools capable of analyzing individual grains at the atomic level. China's Chang'e missions have already returned fresh samples, revealing volcanic activity as recent as 2 billion years ago, far younger than anyone expected. The moon, it seems, has not been geologically dead for as long as we thought. And then there's the most provocative question of all. Could the moon's dust hold biological clues? Not life from the moon, but life from elsewhere. Micrometeorites constantly bombard both Earth and moon, and some carry complex organic molecules, amino acids, the very precursors of life. The moon's surface, lacking atmosphere and erosion, preserves them like a cosmic museum. Hidden in its dust might be the oldest untouched organic material in the solar system. If so, then the moon isn't just a witness to Earth's story. It's a vault of life's potential beginnings. Every handful of lunar dust tells a story of fire, collision, silence, and survival. It records ancient solar winds, cosmic rays, and the echoes of a young Earth's fury. It's both deadly and divine, fragile, yet eternal. Someday soon, humans will walk the moon again. They'll build habitats, dig tunnels, plant flags. But when they brush the dust from their boots, they'll be touching more than soil. They'll be touching time itself. The moon has been watching us since before history began. And maybe, just maybe, in its dust lies the truth of who we are and how we came to be. Because sometimes, the greatest mysteries aren't written in the stars. They're buried in the dust beneath our feet.